What's going on, Detroit? Do you have any idea how many hours you've wasted? How much time you've drained? Go check your Steam hours played. Go check your YouTube time watched. Go check your screen time on your phone. On YouTube, they used to have a thing, I'm pretty sure, where you could check how much time you've watched in total. Now they just do it over a week, but it's still bad. If you could see the total time, I'd be willing to hazard a guess that number would make you feel pretty bad. It would make your nuts quake. It would make your ass shake. From a young age, technology stole my soul. It stole all my time. It stole all of my boredom. It stole all of my interests. And, you know, it's up in the air whether or not I can get those things back. But if I can, there's only one way I'm going to be able to. Dopamine detox is by far the most important self-improvement technique that there is. It's also the hardest. You have to stop all of your bad habits, and by doing that, you're, you're replacing them with good habits. And the, the, what sucks about that is that bad habits are fun, and good habits blow up. There's no way to cope out of it. You can't say it's about vanity, or ego, or, oh, it's toxic because of this or that. You're literally just breaking addictions. You're just restoring your reward system. That's it. It's just delayed gratification. And if you were to argue against that, then you're just a hoe. If any of you goblins manage to jump through some intellectual holes to justify not becoming dopaminergically healthy, then you are a insular, bitch-made coward. I would go as far as to say, if you are a zoomer, dopamine detox is your only way forward. Just as a warning, my goal is that after watching this, you're not going to be able to enjoy your pastimes or hobbies anymore. Because now you're going to know about this, and in the back of your mind, uh, you're always going to feel guilt whenever you play your video games or touch your little worm. Or do anything of that sort involving technology. I mean, it could be anything, but this, the, you know, the theme of this is sort of about technology. If you know about this and you willingly decide not to do it, you're indicating to me that you've given up. You're, you're, you've completely forfeited your life and you're just done. Because if you don't disconnect, it's over. I don't know if you understand the gravity of this situation. I'm not a guy who takes life all seriously and whatever, <clears throat> but like if you want to live life and like do shit, you have to stop. I'm reading an article called Dopamine Fasting Misunderstanding Science Spawns a Maladaptive Fad. Dopamine is one of the body's neurotransmitters and is involved in our body's system for reward, motivation, learning, and pleasure. While dopamine does rise in response to rewards or pleasurable activities, it doesn't actually decrease when you avoid overstimulating activities. So a dopamine fast doesn't actually lower your dopamine levels. Unfortunately, legions of people have misinterpreted the science, as well as the entire concept of a dopamine fast. People are viewing dopamine as if it were heroin or cocaine, and are fasting in the sense of giving themselves a tolerance break, so that the pleasures of whatever they are depriving themselves of will be more intense or vivid when consumed again, believing that depleted dopamine stores will have replenished themselves. Sadly, it doesn't work that way at all. While dopamine detox is a good thing, there's a lot of misinformation about it, as the article points out. It's not that you're depriving yourself out of dopamine, just so every time you take a bite out of a burger, it feels like you're busting a nut or something. But there, there is actual neuroscience backing this up, and there's a healthy way to do it. You know, the, the criticism of that there's misinformation about it, that, that could be levied against any idea that's on the internet. And I'm obviously not a psychologist or anything. All I'm going to do is condense evidence from things I've read and videos I've watched and present them to you in a, in a concise way. There's this really good video I watched by Dr. K about this. And this stuff is pretty complicated, but I'm just going to talk about it in a way that I would understand, but dopamine detox is not about the amount of dopamine as much as it is about the different pathways in your brain that dopamine takes. Dopamine is what gives you motivation. It's what backs up your actions. And there are two main pathways that it can take, the mesocortical pathway and the mesolimbic pathway. The mesocortical pathway runs into your prefrontal cortex. This is the pathway that allows you to plan ahead for a future reward. This is the pathway that governs your ability to take action without immediate satisfaction. The mesolimbic pathway is much shorter. It immediately gives you pleasure when you do something gratifying. It also activates when you're wanting something or craving something. 
it activates when you avoid something that you didn't want to do or that you know would be dangerous. If you're into self-improvement, these descriptions might sound familiar. The mesocortical pathway is the delayed gratification pathway. The mesolimbic pathway is the instant gratification pathway. That's a very simple way of putting it. it. You know, it's a lot more complex, but generally, and you can visually see this in the brain, the mesolimbic pathway is very short. It's like a shoot. And the mesocortical pathway is very long. So short, instant gratification. The dopamine takes a very short path and it's there about. The delayed gratification pathway, very long. It travels a long way. And there is a time and place for instant gratification. You need it. But what happens is the mesolimbic pathway begins to completely override the mesocortical pathway in people that are not dopaminergically healthy. I believe I was one of those people. I believe a very alarming amount of young people have this problem due to their addiction to the internet, which offers them a lot of stimulation and instant gratification. And what happens is there's also this part of your brain in the anterior cingulate cortex, which is dedicated to computing effort, effort computation. So you're, you calculate how hard it is to do something before you do it or, or while you're doing it. It's like you start an essay and you write the title and maybe a little bit of the intro, but then that, that effort computation kicks in and you go, oh fuck, this is 2,000 words and I've barely started and then you, you just scroll on your phone for two hours. When the mesolimbic pathway takes over, the instant gratification pathway, what happens is it changes the anterior cingulate cortex in a way where you can only choose the most low effort option. There are a lot of Zoomers who are directionless. They have no passions or interests, and if they do, they're, they're very shallow. And I was one of them, and I still am one of them to an extent. But what people misunderstand is that it's not like, it's not like we never have interests. It's that we lose interest in things extremely fast. For me, it would go like this. I would get interested in something, I would, I would pick it up, some sort of a sport or skill, and I would immediately have this hyperbolic image in my mind of me like excelling at it and being extremely good at it. But then I'd actually start and realize it's way harder, effort computation, and then I'd quit. There is nothing instantly gratifying about learning a new skill and sucking at it for a while. Or, or starting on the outside of this community and working your way in. The anterior cingulate cortex calculates how much effort it's gonna take and it says fuck this shit because it's used to getting that snappy quick shoot of dopamine transmitters right through the mesolimbic pathway into the cortex because you've been jacking your little dick so much. For years I would come home from school drained and depressed. I would boot up the old computer, just start tugging on my worm, playing video games, watching YouTube. I was completely directionless. I mean, I guess you could say those were my interests or hobbies, but like, if one of my relatives asked, oh, what are you interested in? I'm not gonna be like, oh yeah, I like jacking off. I mean, I was really brutalizing my dong on the daily. My penis has seen horrors beyond imagination. My dick has PTSD, and I have to give it CBD oil so I can sleep at night. My dick wakes up with the cold sweats. My peener has lived through years of torture. Joe Rogan should interview my cock. And I'm not saying that in like a facetious way, like, interview these nuts, Joe. It's like, my Johnson truly has stories to tell, you know, that I think should be heard. I mean, it was just constant for five years. But when I turned 17 in summer of 2020, I said, I'm done. I quit video games and I quit whacking off. And it was crazy. In like one month, my life turned around. I developed new hobbies, new goals, interests you know, pa being truly passionate about things. And I wasn't even on full, like, dopamine detox either. I actually had a transfer of addiction, honestly, because I stopped playing video games and, and watching The Hub, but I started watching a lot, like, of anime and YouTube and stuff like that. It's very possible to restore your reward system. And, you know, it's not guaranteed that you'll find passions from that, but, you know, if you're a Zoomer, it's your best bet, for sure. But, you know, eventually I fell back into the darkness a little bit, School started up and I held strong, but then, you know, winter came, the days got shorter, I started playing video games again, and then the fateful day happened where my hand reunited with my dick and I just started. But you know what? It's time to get back, baby. I've been going all in on this shit. And here's how you do dopamine detox. You write out a schedule of your perfect day that minimizes all of your bad habits and maximizes all of your good ones. Things that are implicit in a dopamine detox is no whacking, no drugs, very limited use of social media, 
video games, the internet in general. I'll watch an episode of a TV show or a little bit of YouTube occasionally, not even once a day. I'll listen to music if it's paired with something productive like working out or cleaning or something like that. The most like instantly gratifying activity I'll allow on the daily is maybe like reading manga on my phone. I'm reading Kingdom right now, it's fire. Like two people are gonna know what that is, but it's sick. And no like romance or hentai manga, by the way. You're weird for that. If you're watching this, you're probably familiar with a channel called Hamza. And, and I like Hamza, but he constantly rags on guys who say they, they only play one hour of video games a day. And honestly, I kind of agree with him. It's not that playing one hour of video games a day is a bad thing. It's not that video games are a bad thing. It's that you're not that guy who can do that. You have to be completely honest with yourself. You're using it as a crutch, and it's not actually one hour a day. Like, if you're successful, you're financially well off, you have a healthy social life, you're chilling, go ahead, play one hour of video games a day. But are you, though? It too easily sucks you in, and there's no way you're only doing it for an hour a day. You're also watching YouTube videos about it. I tried to, I tried to do the hour a day thing with Elden Ring. I couldn't do it, you know? It always ended up as more. So I had to be honest with myself, and it's like... I can't do the hour a day thing. It doesn't work for me. I don't have my life in order. Oh yeah, hold me, mommy. You are Ooh. Ooh, wow, cool. the touch of a woman. How 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 amazing. <laughs> Ooh, yes, mommy. I love how you feel. Oh wow. <laughs> Ooh. That's my impression of the average Souls fan. So I allow myself like an hour a week. On Saturday, I'm allowed to play for like, you know, one play session. It could be longer than an hour, but... So yeah, that's what you do, but uh, speaking of Elden Ring, my fucking dick is tarnished. I have yanked and cranked so much you wouldn't even believe it. I have racked up numbers. My wang actually has this very, like, pronounced leftward slope. And honestly, I don't think it was like that. I think what happened is I was just whacking so much, I actually changed the curvature of my dong. Artificial death in the west, east. 